Uh, my name's Lucy Yeoman, I'm an academic lawyer at the University of Greenwich and I'm Sarah Cross and I'm a law librarian at the University of Greenwich. And one of the things we're going to talk a little bit about is how we think at Greenwich we try and work quite close, we do try and work quite closely with our librarian, um, sometimes possibly not as closely as we could. Um, and also that we have tried to embed the legal research skills training into the substantive courses. And I think it's quite interesting because in our group downstairs this morning, we, we were talking about, um, you know, the problem is you teach research skills in year one in a legal skills course, and the students find that hard to then bring across into other courses. And, and again, you know, Rosemary's course is so interesting because she's designed an assessment which pushes the students into actually having to do it and not being able to get it out of the textbook. And that has to be something that librarians and, and academics do together to design these assessments that, that, that make it real for the students to have to do it, I think. So, part as well, of course, is, and we've talked a little bit about that this morning, haven't we, that there's, there's this consensus that um, legal research skills are important and they are not sufficiently being acquired by the end of the academic stage of training. That's a very clear message coming out and also this recommendation that we should be having some kind of distinctive skills assessment. Um, so we do all need to really be thinking about this. We've got this very clear message coming up. And I know Rose, we talked a little bit this morning as well about, well, you know, are we talking about research skills for the profession or research skills more generally? But I think they're all linked together because if you're good at researching, that means you can find things, evaluate things, work out what's of value. So to a certain extent, a research skill in critical socio-legal studies doesn't mean you can't do other bits of research as well. I think that it's about being able to work things out yourself. So, so what is wrong with graduate skills? One of the things that, that the messages from Letter, and again we've heard a little bit this morning about some of the problems that they identified, was not using, that students don't know how to use the right databases. So employers are saying, well, they're using, they don't know how to use my source. And in a sense, that's almost a non-problem because the, 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 it keeps changing. And to a certain extent, employers have got to do training. But it, if a student, if, if a young person, if a, an employee, if an aged old academic knows how to read and understand and critically evaluate things, we can be trained in the new places to find them, or the old places to find them, because one of the problems is that some law firms don't have access to expensive databases, they have paper sources. But that's, an that's more of an induction issue. If you've got general research skills, you should be able to adapt them. So I think we need to be a little bit careful with the employers saying what it is they can't or can find, which, you know, which databases have we taught them to use, because that's always going to depend on the context. But this is this other sort of more general thing that students, you know, law, law graduates don't understand that sometimes there isn't a right answer. They know how to sort of explore things in depth, to work themselves around. And this is really our problem. It's getting, moving from, I just need to find this one piece of information and everything will be solved, to I need to explore, move across different subject areas, possibly, you know, look at different sources, evaluate the sources I'm looking at, work out, you know, all these progress of cases and, and whether they're still good law or not. Those are, the, those are the difficult things. So, let her have said, when we're talking about assessing research skills, we should be using this lovely file, I have to say, with its detailed learning outcomes, beautiful <coughs> document that's been developed, which I didn't know about until very recently, and I was like, ah, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, here we go. Um, and I've left off number five, which is the CPD, obviously, which is also important. But I think so, you know, and we can't do all of this in one go. We can't do all of this in a legal skills course in the first three weeks of level four. It, it's not going to happen. Okay? And all these things integrate in together. Okay? But this is, I think, what the students find difficult, is these things which is the evaluating, working out what it is they're looking for, that it might not be one hit, there might not be one case, and then evaluating and putting it all together. Okay? And this isn't something that academics can do without librarians or librarians without the academics. We have to try and work out how to do it together. Okay? So 
Wine bed, which is what we, I mean, we do have an legal skills course, we do do some of our training in a legal skills course, but we try and do, like, and so what Sarah does is she delivers sessions within the substantive courses as well, okay? And we've worked out that it's helpful to do that because all the literature on learning says we understand things much better in context. We don't want to do skills in isolation, they need to be meaningful. Um, and I've got this very nice quote from one of our first years. One of the things we developed was that in the library session in legal skills on journals, looking at journals and understanding journals, was linked to a seminar in a, diff, in, in a substantive topic the next week. So in order to go to their human rights seminar the following week, they had to go to the library session in legal skills, or legal method as we called it then, because that was going to teach them how to find an article. They had to find an article that was interesting and bring it to the seminar and talk about it. And the students said that, you know, it was really interesting because it was useful for the substantive subject. It wasn't something that was in a bubble. Okay. So that's what we try and do. So what do we do? Um, I'm going to let Sarah talk about that because she does more of it than me. Yes. More of it. Okay. Um, so, um, as Lucy was explaining, uh, embedded in all um, levels of the undergraduate um, programme. So, the first year, level four, there are these courses, legal skills, which is the general skills um, course, criminal law and civil liberties, and the asterisks um, show the assessments as well, which are part of this are designed by me for two of those and those are included in their course and um, go towards their final mark. The criminal law one actually is, is a formative assessment though but um, the lecturer there wanted that included. And the civil liberties is um, a, a newish course, it's the one term so that one hasn't happened yet actually, it's next week. Um, second year we have land law and EU law and again there's some research assessments. Now these are a bit different because whereas I do the EU law assessment and it's all around the kind of research we do in the session, so looking at the different um, European institutions, how to find European cases, for land law that is um, designed by the lecturer and my session is there to support that and I'll show you that in a minute. And then the third year we have family law, Lucy's subject, again with the um, uh, assessments designed by academic staff. And competition law, again, another new one for me, which is uh, one which was requested by the academics. So, um, and human rights, which is actually the Lexis trainer. Thank you very much to Lexis for that one. So that's really uh, quite a range of different ways that we do that. And the way this has all come about is really that um, I'm very lucky with my colleagues at Greenwich that I'm very much part of the programme team and I get included in the staff email list. So I know what's happening, meetings and things. I get included in reviews. Uh, just last October we had um, a big LLB revalidation and I was involved in that from the beginning which was really interesting and uh, thankfully we got through that with flying colours I think. And Sarah's at all the departmental meetings as well. And Program departmental meetings. meetings and away days so I try and keep up with what's going on because I'm sure everyone knows um, you know, however much people mean to tell you things, it often doesn't happen. And when you just sort of see things on an email, you can find out, ah, oh, yes, there is a new course coming up. Let's find out about that. So it's really good to have that kind of involvement. Um, so just a quick snapshot, really, of, of what we're doing at each level. So level four, we've got this skills, legal skills course. There's two sessions I do. The first one is quite introductory. And the second one is, is actually an older one from when it was a different version. So I know you can't see all that, but this was a handout which the students used as part of a session where we were looking at journals. So they would go into small groups, generally got about uh, 15, 20 students in each seminar group, and then split those down into about four or five per group and hand around a few print journals having talked about what journals are. And then they would 
have a look through them and see what kind of journals they've got and have a look at the articles and then come back and feed back to the rest of the group um, what they've found out and why they might want to use these journals. So it looks like a lot of questions, but it's really just to kind of prompt them about what sort of information they might find. Um, and then level five, this is where the um, colleagues uh, in the, on the academic side have designed this. This is the coursework for land law, and the blue bit is where I come in. So their coursework is set with a particular question, which I know about, but they don't until the actual week. And so the students will be looking at a particular area of law in land law, and they will be finding out um, information for their research and as well as that they also have to do either the Lex law, Lexis certification or the Westlaw one so hopefully having done the first year sessions they know enough about both of those databases to get through that. Um, so we go through, yes yeah, sorry. I was just going to say how, how Sandra designs it around an area of law that isn't in the textbook, so she tries to find a current, you know, controversial case to focus the essay question around because she doesn't want the students to go and just read it in the textbook. So she, you know, sometimes, um, you know, has to hunt around to find the best topic, but she really tries to, so they, so they have to try and research the essay using primary sources as much as possible. Yeah. And from that, I, I sort of identify the general area and steer them in the right direction without hopefully giving them the answers. That's, that's for them to do. And it just made me think that using these topical um, questions are really interesting because when I was doing the um, session for criminal law, not that long ago, uh, I expect everyone saw there were lots of reports about um, reporting of rapes and other crimes and statistics. And we actually had a look at the statistics um, through the data.gov website. And I was asking students, you know, what's happening here? Crime's going down, is it? So it's quite interesting when you've got a really nice story like that to work on. Um, and then the final year, level six, again, this is linked to the coursework set by Lucy and Kim. Um, so again, the blue bit is, is me. So they will have a question again, which is, um, you know, investigating a particular area of law. And this one is about parenthood. So we will be looking at um, family law databases, journal articles, uh, again, exploring different kinds of um, research into the question. And quite often we, we sort of um, draw links between um, different sorts of journals, whether they're um, more academic or maybe practitioner-based, as that's often students find some easier to engage with than others. And also you're really good at helping them think of good search terms because of course that's the other thing that when you get a question like this, you just put parenthood in, it's yeah. not necessarily going to give yeah. you the answers. That, so, you know, they, in the session they'll do some searches around particular terms that might bring up articles yeah. that are relevant. Um, yeah. And again, that, that links very much to research skill too in the BIL standards. So. Um, creating search strategies and um, search terms. Um, just mention a quick, quickly about the um, Academic Law Libraries survey, which um, we've all had recently and been filling in, I hope. <laughs> These, I think, are really useful. And we were talking before we started about having to uh, make a case with your institution for doing things and having these survey um, results are really helpful but I just looked at these and I found it was quite interesting actually that this is already all happening that um, law library staff are doing uh, legal research skills in 98% of cases but academic staff are involved in 62% um, law library staff alone 12% joint responsibility in 60% so it does seem to be this is two years ago as well, so I'm anticipating that when we see the results of this year, it's probably going to have gone up a little bit again. And this was also very encouraging legal research incorporated in the curriculum in 87%, but of course that covers 
quite a range of ideas, whether it's a, a skills course or embedded in the curriculum. And then just some numbers. So um, in, in that year, students get about 5.4 hours of instruction. And I, I think it was the people at Oxford who were making such a high mean, actually, because uh, oh, it, was, <laughs> it was very, very high in places. No, 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 not the best day. Eh? No, 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 no oh, that's, that's before. This one okay, like so, yeah. so we'll see an even huger, huger figure <laughs> when it comes out. So, yeah, it was, um, that's my figure in the brackets, and how long people spend delivering this, this training. So everyone's doing a lot already, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the next one, and if you didn't know, which I'm sure everyone does, those are the places where you can find it. So... I mean, one of the issues around all this thing of embedding skills is that there are often attitudes of like, I haven't got time for skills teaching. And again, I, you know, I'm talking to librarians before, it's often been about trying to find one lecturer who you can get in with and start working with and build it. Um, and again, this, this is comments that came out of the Legal Education Training Review, lecturers saying, well, the curriculum's already full. I know, so we haven't got time for this. And I, I think... I do understand that you know that there's a lot of pressure to employability and people say we're doing so much skill stuff. So, but legal research isn't even a skill. It's like, is it, isn't that what we're doing? That if we can't, if, if at the end of their degree, the students can't work it out for themselves, really the degree is pretty pointless because there's no point in us just like standing in a lecture, telling them some cases, they go in an exam, they write some cases, they come out with a piece of paper at the end. That's what the students would like. Um, preferably without the exam even, that they would just attend the lectures and get the piece of paper. And I have received knowledge, I have got the knowledge somewhere, I can't remember it, but never mind. But that's not, you know, to, I think, research, I, all skill, you know, you can embed all skills into substantive teaching, it makes it more meaningful for the students, it makes our courses more interesting for us to teach. But I think we have to really, really think as academics and librarians about how we're incorporating these research skills <coughs> into the heart of our academic courses because it, it, to do research in, in, in a vacuum is, is meaningless, really. It's, it's not an empty sort of vacuous skill. It's about understanding and using legal materials. So, um, I, you know, and, and I think, you know, Rebecca huxley Bin says it, you know, without knowledge there are no skills and vice versa, and she's right. You know, with, so, but there are barriers to be broken down, and when you come to events like this, often it's the people who don't, you know, who, who are happy to do the skills work, who are here. But whether you're librarians or academics, we need to sort of chip, chip, chip away at colleagues and say, no, we've really got to try and find a way of doing this, I think. Um, and especially research skills. And this thing, again, about getting the students to understand there isn't always the right answer. There's a very good article in The Law Teacher about... Um, a course in Australia where they've incorporated, um, you know, done this quite intensive legal research training. And one of the things she does is get them to keep a research diary. And in fact, Sandra, my colleague who teaches land law, um, again, the research essay that the students have to do, they have to keep a, a research log during their process. And that counts for part of the coursework mark. And they have to upload it regularly onto Moodle as well, so they can't just make it up at the end. Um, and this is what part of what they did, and we do that in talks as well. Although they don't have a library session in talks, they do a research essay and a research log in the talk log as well. So our second year is doing it across two of their core courses. But I love this idea that before you did the research course, this student thought there was an answer. She could just get X and Y and she'd have it. And it's not like that. And this other student who's like, oh, exactly that. I thought I'd get some knowledge and that would be it. And it's about getting the students, if we want them to be good researchers, to cross that boundary and think, OK, this is an ongoing process. I, I, you know, it's, it's not a finite piece of knowledge that I'm going out with. I, what I'm learning is how to be this thinking person. So that's what we hope for. Um, whether we achieve it or not, it's not always. And I think um, that's us. There's another HEA workshop, funded workshop, that we're hosting at Greenwich on the 7th of April, so hopefully some of the people on the waiting list for this. Um, the focus of the workshop is slightly different because we're going to be talking about embedding, particularly about this embedding skills, but um, you know, we want a, 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 a proactive workshop to come out with some good ideas at the end of the day. So, and that's us. Questions? Yes.
assessment, their overall assessment. The family law coursework at level six and the human rights and the, the, the um, competition law, it's 50% of course so is on that piece of research. Rather than yeah. having like an essay, standard essay, yeah. you would have something like that. Well if they are, they are effectively yeah, essays. I mean the land law one is an essay with a part of the marks going on the research okay. process. The family law one is an essay. That's what they're doing, but they have to research the law themselves. They can't. We don't teach them the law, so and um, and we expect them to have gone way beyond the text. You can't answer those questions from a textbook. So because we have some at Leicester, we have a seminar mm. which, which is before they have to submit their essay, mm. which is a research skills seminar, mm. and we give them a question mm. and say or look in a certain mm. places that they can you draw. And you ask this question by looking at those cases. We do not give them a review of this as well. No. Yeah. Maybe a review of that But it is maybe because it's not assessed because the, it depends. Some people think really seriously, and people don't. Well, there are always going to be students who don't take things seriously. And I mean, I think we have to always accept that as well. That, you know, and our family law session, some of the students don't turn up. And then six weeks later, they're knocking on my door, sending me emails saying, I can't find any articles on this subject. And I'll check the register and say, you weren't at the library seminar, you didn't send in a sick note. Um, you need to look at Sarah's slides from the seminar. You need to go and way work it out. And then come back and ask me again. I'm not going to rerun the seminar for you. But they don't because it's not a week before the deadline. They don't. Mm -hmm. But it's it's one, of, it's one of the it's one of the teaching sessions on the course. It's not an add-on. So it's like in our seminar this week, we are going to the library and we're there with the register. And of course, there are still going to be people because sometimes they don't turn up for all sorts of things, and and sometimes they turn up and they don't really pay any attention. And then again, they come and say, I can't find anything. I put in this search term. And it's like, well, in the library seminar, actually, we used all these different search terms. All these. You know, articles came, and we looked at this journal, we looked at that journal, and they were like, oh, oh. Yeah, because they were looking out of the window. So, but I think know, part of trying to make it more interesting for students is to get them involved in doing things in the seminar, which is always quite difficult. Mm. Um, but if you've got a small enough group, you can devise some activities which will hopefully, you know, impress upon them what they're actually doing. And we, and we always impress on them. This is about the essay. If you go to this seminar, you will, you know, set off on doing your essay, and after the library seminar, you know, go out and come in next week with a list of, of articles that you think might be useful. So it's about tying it, constantly tying it. And I hate the idea that they'll only learn for an assessment, and they won't only learn for an assessment. But on the other hand, we do have to design assessments so that we're pushing them to to, to do the work because we're all human and. If they don't have to, if they can just read the textbook. Mm. Right, you know, they, they, yeah. When you tell students, well, you weren't there, yeah. go away, look at, the, look at the notes, have you received serious criticism about that? Because I would explain that to them, and I support to the <coughs> university, and her response was, oh, that's very punitive. I always do it very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> and if they were ill, if they were genuinely ill at the time and they'd emailed in advance and said, I'm going to miss the seminar, you know, and I did take someone emailed last week, I'm really, you know, I've got something had happened, I'm really worried I'm going to miss the library seminar, then I'll say, I'm really, really sorry to hear about Look at the slides, have a go, and if, if from, because Sarah puts up very comprehensive slides explaining all the different things and how to access the slightly temperamental children's database. <laughs> Once you've had a look at that, had a go at it, come and see me or go and see Sarah. Um, to, so that's one thing. But if it's like two weeks before the deadline and they turn up and say, I can't find any family law materials on Westlaw, I, am, I will email them back and say, well, I'm very surprised you're looking on Westlaw <laughs> because we had a seminar on this very subject. There are slides available. 
the it here to words at the same or maybe even words some and you've forgotten, I suggest you go back and look at the slides, discuss it with it, and then if you're still struggling, come and see me. So I never close the door on them completely. And I think there are, you know, you do have to be careful with non-attendance and how you mm -hmm. do it. But I do no, I think because otherwise what happens is the students think that we are there to teach them at their convenience. And we're not. We're there to teach them the course that we've designed, which we've put thought into how it goes. You know, so if they miss a, miss a class without a good reason, I think we need to be quite firm with them and say, why should I now reteach you? Because you weren't there in the first place. But then, you, you know, that, but that, in, I think it depends a little on the personality of the tutor. And I've got much tougher as I, time has gone on. Partly because I think they need to take responsibility. And ultimately it is, it's about getting them to take responsibility for their own development. And you can't do that without putting some effort in. Yeah, I think that's my... Thank you. So yes, I don't want to take any more time.